I'm Tammy Uzalak Hall, the host of the LDS Living Deseret Bookshelf Plus podcast called Sunday on Monday. It's a come follow me podcast and I'm here to announce something super exciting. It's this, it is our Let's Dig In New Testament study journal. This is so fun. What we did is we took every week this year, 52 weeks, and we found words from each lesson in Hebrew and in Greek that will be significant as you study the New Testament this year. Now, why Hebrew, why Greek? Well, because Hebrew, hello, it's my favorite language, love it, been studying it, but Greek because the New Testament was translated in Greek, so you wanna know what words mean in Greek as well. Now, I'm gonna share with you three words that I think are so significant that will make everything you study this year so much more meaningful, and I wanna talk to you about the first one, which is the word Bethlehem. I immediately fell in love with this word. So Bethlehem is actually two Hebrew words put together. The first word is Beth or Bayit, and the second word is Lahem. Bayit or Beth means house, and Lahem means bread. So Bethlehem literally means house of bread. But what I love about this word is this. Bethlehem is the house of bread where Jesus Christ, the bread of life, was born. Now, as cool as all of this is, then I kind of began wondering, all right, well, what does this have to do with me? And then it hit me. Oh my gosh, I love this so much because I was born in Bethlehem. Okay, not really Bethlehem, but I was born in a Bethlehem. I was born in a house of bread. I was born into a home where I had parents who loved Jesus and they taught me to love Jesus. How cool is that? And now today, in the home that I live in with my family. I hope it's a Bethlehem. Now listen, you're gonna to come to my house and it might be a little dirty and the toilets are not gonna be clean all the time. But I truly think that if we love the Lord and serve Him, the homes that we live in can become bayit lachems. They can become homes of bread that bear witness of the bread of life. The next word that I wanna share with you is 5,000. And you're probably thinking, well, that's two words. You're totally right, that's fair but we have to study those two words together to understand the context of the story found in Matthew chapter 14. In Matthew chapter 14, this is where the Savior feeds 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fishes. Now the scriptures tell us that the people there ate until they were filled. So think about in my mind, all that bread and all those people. The scriptures tell us he fed 5,000 besides women and children. Some scholars believe the Savior may have fed nearly 10,000 people with so little food. So then I wondered, why would it say 5,000 if he actually may have fed 10,000? Then I studied this word in Hebrew and in Greek. So how cool is this? So the number five in Hebrew is a symbol of God's grace. The number thousand in Greek is a symbol of total inclusiveness. No one is left without. I think that the story in Matthew chapter 14 about the Savior feeding the 5,000 is actually a parable about His grace and goodness for all of us. It fills us, it's totally inclusive, and it's for everyone. And that is why I like the number 5,000. The last word that I want to share with you is the number 40. In Hebrew, it's pronounced arabim, and here's what it means. 40 is a period of testing, trial, probation, or mourning. Now, think about that as I remind you of some of the stories in the scriptures that have the number 40 in them. For example, Noah and his family were on the ark while it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses went up to the mount to receive the Ten Commandments, and he was there for 40 days and 40 nights. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Jonah, when he went to Nineveh to tell all the people that they needed to repent or they would be destroyed, he told them they had 40 days to repent. And then the most significant 40 that many of us know of is that the Savior fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. How does the number 40 now change all of those stories? And then I wanna ask you, raise your hand if you are in your 40s. <laughs> if you are in a period of trial, testing, probation, or mourning, I want to assure you of this. Our heavenly parents and Jesus Christ they get it. They know 40 very well, which is why when they tell us that our 40s won't last, they really mean it. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. And then listen to this. 
And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs of everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And in hindsight, listen, I would never want to repeat my 40s, but I will tell you this, I am so grateful for all that my 40s taught me. No matter how you end up studying the New Testament this year, I can assure you of this, taking the time to study the words of Jesus is going to enhance your life. Last year when we studied the Old Testament, our goal was to find Jesus in every story. This year as we study the words of Jesus, our goal is to follow Jesus in everything that we studied this year. So that's the challenge. Follow Jesus, study His words, use these really fun Hebrew and Greek words to enhance your understanding of the Come Follow Me lesson and the New Testament this year. I think you're going to love it. I am so excited to study this. And if you want to know more about the Sunday on Monday podcast, go to ldsliving.com slash Sunday on Monday. And have fun this year and dig into the New Testament. It's going to be awesome.